the Holt Naylor Show, episode 11. Got some cool guests right around the corner, some surprise guests, uh, former ECU Pirates, and then former NFL punter Marquette King, one of the best ever do it in the NFL, joins us on the other side. The Holt Naylor Show, brought to you by Southern Ease. Hope you enjoy the show. If not, as always. Holt Naylor turns, and Holt will take off and run himself. He's at the 40-yard line. Holt Naylor's to the 30. What can he do? 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Pirates. There's local politics, bud. It's showtime! Episode 11, brought to you by Southern Knees, is here. Boys, come here real quick. Let's make a surprise guest. I have some surprise former Pirates. Yo, it's your boy Tig. Isaiah Winsett. Tig. Check him Tig. out. It's your boy Let's Tig. Go. How y'all doing? What's up? Still, still Hollywood. And Big Noah. What's up, y'all? Big Noah checking in. How y'all hey, doing? Let's go. <laughs> I'll get y'all on soon. Y'all got anything else? Hey, free my boy Hope, man. He been balling, man. We got, <laughs> some, we got something in tune for y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go. I'll get them on soon, though. We're uh, we're moving into our house on Thursday, so maybe next week I'll get them on and we'll uh, we'll chat it up about that, boys. So had to do that. Uh, give an update on on the Pirates because obviously we have a huge ECU fan base. So, um, dude, it's been fun being their teammates. I'll tell you that much. Um, it's uh, it's been a blast, and I kind of give an update each week on the UFL. Um, Thursday is cut day. They cut from fifty eight to fifty. We all feel pretty good about our spots. Um, like Tig kind of just said there, didn't know he was going to say that, but I am right now a backup, but just going to fight every day and continue to you know, take most advantage of my reps, and I have so far. So, uh, boys, we're just, we're just continuing to grind the walk-on lifestyle. 50, 58 to 50 is not nearly as bad as, as the previous one, so it's got to be a yeah, little better from, feeling, right? Yeah, we went from 73 to, uh, to 50 – no, 75 to 58. Yeah, so and actually from nearly we have 50, 20. Yeah, uh, and I kind of joked before and said it was like the Juco Pro Bowl. We, it's really not 58 anymore. Then they got to cut seven guys because one of our linebackers got uh, cut in the middle of walk through the day because he didn't want to go in. So they just cut him and he <laughs> left. Wow. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so. so do you guys have GM – like is it structured out there similar to an NFL team where you have the owner and a GM? Or like how does it work? Does the Rock – is he technically the owner for everyone? Yeah, so The Rock and Danny Garcia, um, his business partner, I think like Fox Sports, there's like a private equity thing. They kind of own all of it. Uh, The Rock's obviously kind of the face of it. But, yeah, Yeah. we have a GM. We have all that. Um, So it's been very professional so far. It's like very professional, but also parts of it that aren't professional at all, I guess. But, I mean, it's a spring league. You can't expect too much. But, like I said, I have – not many complaints for that. I've really, really enjoyed it. It's been fun. Dude, March 30th, first game. I'm pumped for that. Um, Who are you guys open Birmingham, up with? Uh, Birmingham Stallions. So the the winners of the USFL. So probably the biggest spring league game um, and maybe ever. I know spring league was big back in the day. USFL was. So I don't know. We'll see, boys. Champ versus champ. Yeah, we'll have to see. I probably won't be playing too much, but Tig will be and, and Noah probably will be too. So we'll see. Hopefully I get my shot soon, man. Definitely. That's all you keep doing. Just keep showing up. Keep going to work, bro. Yeah, boys, for sure. Hey, before we kind of get going with it, just wanted we talked about Southern Ease in the opener, um, our title sponsor. What are you waiting for? Experience the many wellness benefits of Southern Ease's tasty hemp edibles by going to southernease.com. Hey, support them. They're supporting us. Um, Obviously, our followers are very loyal. Uh, A lot of us ECU fans and you know, hey, Jack, we talk about Southern hospitality, and, and that's what Southern Knees is, man. So go check them out, southernknees.com. Boys, it's uh, it's the time of the year, spring ball. I remember we were talking about thing, uh, winter conditioning and mat drills, but yeah. spring ball now, probably the best time of the year. What are, what are we feeling? Uh, what are vibes in Greenville like since I'm not there? I, uh, what are the vibes like? First, first day today, um, obviously we recorded a day or two prior to when it actually releases, but – First day of spring ball today, and just being in the facility and around, obviously still doing my rehab, uh, talking to the guys, they're excited and they're stoked. Um, I think just you kind of get that feel of freshness from them uh, with the changes that we made in the off season, and honestly, just get that taste out of your mouth from last season. Um, I think we all know it. Um, anytime you get a chance to get back out there and almost get a fresh start, you take it. And so uh, I think they're ready to go out there and, and work hard and hopefully prove everyone wrong again. 
Dude, I hope so, man. Uh, I mean, spring ball is the best time of the year other than obviously fall because, first of all, the weather's great. Summer's tough because you got summer conditioning. No one's on campus but, obviously, the the players and athletes. Um, spring ball, though, everyone's there. Some good old darties, boys. Yeah. Uh, go to practice, crash some, some beers at the pool. I mean, what better can you ask for in America <laughs> than that right there? Go to a baseball game, too. Oh, yeah. Those were the Dude, best baseball's uh, – they're playing pretty good right now. I've been able to follow a little bit. Our boy Riley Johnson, we got to get on soon. Uh, is he still bad leadoff? He's hitting nukes, yeah. He hit Drug the test the guy. Yeah, he probably will get one this week. Um, if it was a professional sport, he for sure would. But uh, he hit two this past weekend. The second one was literally off the scoreboard. So, go Riley. Let's Jeez. go. Drew, how we uh, how we feeling about spring ball for the Pirates? What are your thoughts? Uh. I'm kind of with Jack. Uh, the big thing about spring ball is like that new fresh slate and not just for the team, but at, for individuals. Like I think spring is really where you set your, yourself up for fall camp. Like I'm here to compete for a spot and I think there's a lot of spots open all over that team. And I'm excited to see, you know, how that falls out and, you know, who steps up to the plate where it's needed. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think it's an open slate on offense in every position. Like, and you could have said last year was like that, but, you know, was it really Mason was kind of presumed as the guy after me, which he deserved to be. I mean, he waited his turn, his time, um, was obviously a big recruit. So open slate now, boys, new OC, I, new quarterbacks, new receivers, like new coaches. Yeah. <laughs> I think an interesting perspective too, is your team gets a new identity and, um, really to the public at first eye and, and on the field, this is the opportunity for it to come out for the first time. Um, because I mean, you build your identity through winter and through mat drills and stuff like that. We always talked about that. We preached it, but when you go into spring ball, you know, you can't just be a leader in the weight room. You can't just be a leader in the film room. You got to be kind of all around leader. And I feel like over the last two years, um, that kind of leadership class, if you will, has left. Um, obviously you still got Raj and big Tay there who are returning captains and I'm sure they'll hold, they will hold it down. But like when Drew said, you've got so many spots over the field open, that really just kind of said to me, like, there's going to be a whole new group of leadership that's going to set the tone for what the 2024 season is going to be. 100%. And man, like, one of the good things about the spring as a player is there's no pressure on it. Like right. that, they should go out there and play free. You're not game planning. Like, you're not keeping stats, really. I mean, the coaches are, but it's not public. Like, the tough, the spring is the best part. T falls really tough at times. Because when you lose games, it's tough. But in the spring, yeah. there's zero pressure. Like, I guess there's a little pressure in the spring game. But if you're feeling pressure, then it's not very good. <laughs> you're not ready for it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I think it's the best time, especially for this offense, man. If we want to win games, um, our defense hopefully is just as good as last year. I kind of have a bad feeling they're going to fall off a little bit. But even if they fall off a little bit, like they were great last year. To where they don't they can fall off as long as the offense picks up um i think we'll be fine yeah i mean i think there's a few questions on the defense if you want to talk about it real quick you got middle linebacker you got the departure of of taylor jackson to liberty um at at rush you missed jeremy lewis and myself um not saying that in a selfish way but that's a drop off in experience because now you're getting a transfer who doesn't have a whole lot of in-game experience um he looks promising from what we've seen but we haven't seen it in person yet and then you got sam danka who's a freak of nature um a stud in my eyes but like i just said he lacks a little bit of in-game experience um in that sense it was kind of thankful that i got hurt at the end of last season because it got him probably three or four games with crucial playing time that mattered whereas he wouldn't have got it if i didn't get injured um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to Sam playing. I hope he steps up to the plate and accepts the challenge. He's got a new position coach. It's kind of a new, new time for him to really like take control of that position. Um, but he's, he's there with competition too, you know, brought in that guy from Louisville. So, um, I'm personally just curious to see how that works out. Yeah. I think the two storylines of the spring are obviously the offense, uh, all the new guys, new OC, how is the offense even going to look? I've heard they're running really fast right now. They're going up tempo. Um, heard the offense is simple. You just move fast, which I like. If you go fast, man, you can get these guys set up. Uh, the defense is going to give you bland looks. That's just that's part of going so fast is getting right. bland looks. They can't send all these exotic blitzes that college football does nowadays. Which, hey, while we're talking about it, this fall we're going to have film and we're going to go in depth on that film and be posting it 
on the show and on X at Whole Halo Show. So I'm kind of excited. Thank you for the fall. I'm excited to do that, boys. Yeah. yeah. And I think that'll give kind of a, a taste of what we know and our knowledge to the normal just kind of football fan out there because me and Drew were talking about this. You know, you have family members or friends or stuff like that who they'll comment on the games with you where they'll tell you something about what you did and you're like, like you, like you would always, oh, I mean, you know more than anyone, but like I'd go on Twitter after a game and it'd be like, Powers has to keep contained right there. And it's like a blitz where I'm going inside on a gap, like to the A gap. And it's like, no, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, we could talk about that stuff with, with people. No, I, uh, especially you, because you played in the defense. So you'll be able to do that. I didn't play in the offense they're running, but I've been around football enough. Like, I know pass concepts, I know blocking concepts, I know run game. So, you can't run but so many things. There's different ways you can run it, but in the end, the reads are reads. Um, so it should be fun to do that. Um, we could we could probably get some Drew Daughter film up there too. I mean, keep in mind he's going to be playing. So oh, hundred percent. Drew's going to be calling in. We get some game uh, game film review with Drew. You already know <laughs> it's got to be Drew. <laughs> when are we committing, brother? Look, we're working on yeah. we're working on the the finishing touches here, but it's coming. Soon. Just know it's being polished up being polished up let's go let's go <laughs> well boys i want to give a shout out to anson belt um before we get on kind of the, a little bit more football talk but ansonbelt.com um over ten thousand combination micro adjustable fits all season of life the boys should be getting should be getting skinnier and ladies the few ladies that watch our show it's it's a uh, skinny season summer's coming right around the corner it was a little pudgy season in the winter we all understand we understand a little bit but hey it's getting hotter at least it is in texas Boys, is it getting hotter in North Carolina yet? Uh, it did last week. It's getting a little chilly now. Yeah, but today was weird. You talk about ants and belts, and the thing that sticks out to me here is you talk about summertime, you got weddings, you got sporting events, you're going golfing, you're going to the beach. You might be going to Jack's out at the beach having a couple of drinks. You know what I'm saying? The belt fits perfectly for all those events. You could dress it up. You could dress it down. You can make an athletic. You can do whatever you want to do with it, and it looks great. So make sure you check out ants and belts, our good friends. I tell you what an ad. Holy cow, boys. Yeah, shout out nice. to let's give a shout out, Drew. We got the applause ready. We need to give a shout out to our sponsors for actually letting us just talk about them. There we go. They just let us they're like, you know what, we trust you guys. And you know, we're all about authenticity. This is the people show. Um, we're always gonna be honest. And look, we're not gonna partner with people that we don't believe in and uh brands that we don't believe in. So they just let us talk about them and hey. The boys are going to hype them up because the boys like the brand. One, Yeah, I was going to say, it's real genuine love here. I mean, we get their product. Um, I don't want to I don't want to talk about mine yet, but, you know, we wear our products. Um, and it's really tr like true words. What I Like, I mean what I Go say. ahead, like, Jack. When I, when talk about me, it. All right, I'm going Go about ahead. it. Madam Mesquite, our good friends. Um, I, was, I was wearing out the trucker hat snapback, um, and I went and I found this sporty kind of mesh material, pretty nice cap. Uh, our previous giveaway winner is getting one. It is on the way. Um, but, I mean, solid people, great products. Uh, definitely go check them out. You know, they got some really cool designs. They've got hunting accessories. They've got hats, shirts, stickers, bags, almost anything you can think of. So definitely give a shout-out and uh, take a look at Madame Mesquite Goose Club. We appreciate you guys. We're going to get Drew wearing one of the Madame Mesquite hats, man. He, uh, we're going to get Drew some swag. Yeah, Drew, Drew's not a big hat guy. Hats, I've noticed that. Hats don't fit me, man. My head's weird. <laughs> but, boys, um, spring ball is a spring game. Jack, are you going to be there to see the spring game? I think I will be there for the spring game. Um, if not, I'm for sure going to be out at a couple scrimmages. So, I'll get some feedback for the boys, come back on here, and, and let you guys yeah, we know got, how it's going. We got to let everyone know kind of how it's going so far. I saw a couple of clips today. Um, I'm pretty pumped about – dude, I'm hyped about the quarterbacks. Caden Hauser, um, yeah. Jake Garcia, obviously Raheem Jeter. So, I'm excited to see them compete. The offense should be easy. Talked to one of the coaches this morning. Like I said earlier, um, it's a quarterback-friendly offense. So, we just got to go out there, get the ball where it's supposed to be going, and whatever quarterback do, does that should – should play at the end of the day. No matter what NIL, whoever's getting the most money, whoever moves the ball down the field needs to be playing because we're not going to go through what we went through last year. Sorry, boys. I know you were a part of it. Um, but as fans now, like, it's time to win. And I think Coach Houston knows that, and the offense should know that too. But you got to score points to win. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I think the coaches kind of know. Um, I don't know if they're hitting the panic button or not. I don't think Coach would necessarily ever convey that to us. Um, 
but he is at this point, you know, he's going to do what it takes to win and he doesn't care what people think or how it looks. He's going to do what needs to be done. So I trust that. But Drew, we got Marquette in. Yes, sir. Let's go. Marquette, can you hear me? What's up? Yeah, I can hear y'all. What's up? What's up, brother? Let's go. Appreciate you for doing this, dude. Yeah, man. Appreciate y'all. Dude, um, so we got Jack and Drew. They'll ask you questions here in a minute, but um, hey, let's get right to it, dude. I just wanted to you know, straight up ask. Uh, I know the fans, we tweeted earlier, which I know you saw. Just yeah. kind of, um, you know, you're one of the best punters, at least in our, when we were growing up watching, me and Jack were talking before the show. We were like, dude, he was the king of swag, man. He brought yes. uh he brought the punter the first swag. punter back. with an arm sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. I respect Yeah, so it. What, uh, what, when did that start? Were you always swaggy as a punter? Or like when you got to the league, you were like, dude, you know, something has to separate me. When did all the swag start as a punter? Man, I'm, I've always had it, man. Um, <laughs> I started out as a receiver, though. So being a receiver and, and being forced to be a punter only in college, I mean, I ain't had no choice, so – I was like, if I'm gonna be a punter only, I might as well just do like at least dress up and look the part. So huh. well, that's why I did it, man. For sure, dude. I uh and boys, he still can catch. He gets in the pack and go line sometimes and <laughs> goes out there and catches the whole fade ball. Emergency receiver. <laughs> yeah. Still got them hands, man. Hey, Let's put go. him in. Jack, what do you got? Uh I really just kind of want to talk about kind of your upbringing to the league and where you are now. Um, you started at Fort Valley State. You went as an undrafted free agent. You know, as as players, um, we always hear, like, if you're good enough, people will find you. And so I wanted to kind of just understand, like, how that process went for you. Um, I, obviously, if, if you've, you've gotten where you are now, you believed in yourself. But just kind of, like, the moments of doubt and, and stuff leading up to the draft. Like, how did that go for you? I mean, it was definitely stressful at one point. But, um I don't know. It was one of those things where I, whatever happened was going to happen. Right. Um, I I made sure I put the work in and I, I didn't really understand that uh, preparation and luck is, was a thing. I thought it was like, just, it's, it's also mindset too, but like a lot of that has to do, do with a, a lot of luck, um, especially with how it goes now. It's more, more of who you know. And I was definitely blessed to be in a position where uh, John Bonamengo at the time decided to take me on his wing and, and put me in a position to be successful at the position because I was just at a small school and all the way I got uh, uh, I became seen was a YouTube video, yeah. one YouTube video, and it just started going wild. Yeah, and then so you go to the Raiders, um, you have an NFL career, you lead the league in punting one year, your second team all pro in another. Um, I, I remember just kind of like watching highlights and I never thought as a linebacker, I'd, I'd find myself watching punting highlights, but one of your <laughs> games versus the dolphins comes up where you're just dropping bombs. Um, so like, just what was that like, you know, going from a small school undrafted to like kind of that sense at the time where you're just like, I made it like, wow. Um, it was, I mean, it was fun. I was, I was enjoying life. I, I think I was enjoying life to a point to where, uh, everything felt so right that I was doing something wrong. Right. And, uh, I don't know how else to explain that, but like, I don't know. I was just in a very happy place. Uh, everything just felt so easy. And I don't feel like I got too comfortable because I always had a mindset of, of just grinding, like working really hard at what I did and trying to be the best punter in the world. And I was doing that. Um, but I don't know. Sometimes stuff happens, but. I don't know. I was just, I was just in the moment, man. Enjoying every, every ounce of fun that I was having. Yeah, that's awesome. Appreciate it. My question is, um, so for most of your career, you were a top punter. Um, mm -hmm. some could argue probably the best in the league. So, like, what about right now that is, um, keeping you out of the league, like the NFL? You'd say. I think, I think it's more of who you know. Um, honestly, I'm, I know for a fact I'm still one of the best punters, and I'll still be one of the best even if they put me in the league now and that's the the thing with the league that I'm in now that being the UFL I get a chance to showcase what I can do again um I don't I can't really put my finger on it I mean I know I know what I really want to say but I, I've put myself in a different place mentally where uh I want to I want to try to be as positive as I can with the because I still feel like I got a chance to get back I don't know how it's gonna happen but I feel like I have a chance to get back and I feel like also it'll help if I try to stay in the positive 
try to whatever I put out, try to make it positive, you know, because I mean, no doubt. Yeah. No, for sure. I and you were talking about uh well boys, first of all, he can still kick the crap out of the thing. I see it every day in practice. <laughs> but um he is it's very true about people who you know and Marquette, I know we talked about this at lunch one day about just like who you know in the league and stuff and like you talked about luck, dude, and this yeah. If you don't if you don't have connections in the league, dude, it's tough to get in, first of all, and then stay in. Because mm-hmm. I mean there's there's firings all the time in the league to where like you might have a connection and then bam, he's gone, he's out of the league too. Yeah. Um and like I want to ask you about like the kicker relationship. Like obviously you're a punter. How much of that goes into it to like you having a relationship with a kicker that's on your team? Like, is that a big thing? Like I know like as a quarterback, it's a big deal to like the quarterback and backup quarterback relationship, the NFL is a huge thing. And if they don't get along, like they'll go find someone else. Like, is that kind of the same thing with kicker punter or does it really matter? Not really. Um, because you can always have a quarterback to, to hold, you know what I'm saying? Quarterbacks yep. can hold his holders too, but it, especially when you got like an established kicker, um, let's say I'm trying to go on a, on an NFL team or something. And it's a kicker that's been there. Like, let's say like a Justin Tucker or something. Um, for somebody to voice their opinion about them wanting to bring you in as a, a holder, and also if you, if the coaches are still cool with you or whatever, whatnot, like that's an easy way to get into. But I mean, having a relationship with the kicker definitely helps because the kicker needs to be uh, comfortable with the person that's holding the football. If you can't trust the person holding the football, y'all ain't gonna be making points like that. True, and I, dude, I was gonna ask. I remember Pat McAfee was said. Um, he talked about holding before and he like lied in his draft stuff. Did you hold in college or like when did you kind of figure out like crap? I better figure out how to do this if I want to be in the NFL. I held in college. Um, I didn't like doing it, and I I mean some I still kind of don't like it. I mean it's whatever, <laughs> but um, I mean it's it's something that you need to do. It's an extra position, like because you it ain't like we're doing anything else. We got to just kick it. You can only kick so many footballs, and then. After that, what else you got to do? So you give yourself time to work on holding the ball and everything, and you're with the kicker most of the time, and y'all build uh, the most uh, out of that friendship because y'all are around each other the whole practice with the long snapper. So it creates a it creates time for all of y'all to create some type of chemistry during those three hours that we out there watching you throw footballs and stuff. For sure, dude. And, uh, I mean, you kind of already talked about it, but, like, what is your – I mean, obviously, like Drew said, you were – I still think you're one of the best punters in the world. Um, mm-hmm. What is your goal for playing in the UFL? And kind of talk about the UFL. I know, obviously, yesterday, like, we saw Danny Garcia and your mm-hmm. relationship with her has been very public. But, like, how does a league like this help, obviously, you know, players like me who are still young in their career, but also players like you who are have played in the league but also still think they got it and can get back in? Well, also remember what Coach Stutz was talking about where everybody has a different reason why they're playing in the UFL. Um, and that, that's, that's actually a really big deal. Like everybody's playing the UFL for a different reason. Um, I think it's important though, especially for people like yourself, because sometimes like some of y'all don't get a chance to display y'all's talent, you know, um, maybe people need to see more film, like the most recent film that you got, because that helps yep. out a lot. Too. And, um, I mean, for for someone like myself, uh, like I said, I still I still know I got it. I still know I'm one of the best to do it still. And um, I don't know. I, I'm just – I'm doing it because I, I still feel like I got a lot left in the tank. So that's why I want to do it. But um, it's just good to show that you can do it currently. Oh, 100%, dude. And I think that's what, you know, this league is special because – I was telling them on last episode is like, dude, everyone has a story. I mean, we got you, we got Vic Beasley, who are obviously you know, two of the best players in the league when they played and yeah. are still balling. And then you got guys like me who are 24 years old trying to, you know, get back. Yeah, I was on the practice arm. squad. Yeah, 100%. And that's uh, – As a matter of fact, me and Taylor actually talking about how crazy it was, like the margin of the talent between this league and the NFL – and there's people in this league is actually better than some of the people playing in the NFL. And like the, the pay scale and everything's different. Like it's only that much of a difference, you know? So crazy. Oh, hundred percent, dude. And I was I was telling Jack and Drew off air, I was like, dude, it's kind of cool now because it feels like a college locker room. And I feel like a reason of that is because the NFL, like guys are getting paid hundred million dollars and there's practice squad players, like there's such a mark, there's such a huge difference in pay 
college now with N- with NIL, like players are getting paid differently. Right. Like this is the only league pretty much on the planet where like every single player is getting paid the same. Like everyone's acting the same. Like there is no like entitlement. It's just, you know, we're all here to play. We're all here trying to get to the next step. Like, so it's a pretty cool league. And I've, I've definitely learned to appreciate, you know, kind of the college atmosphere of it. Yeah. No, it's going to be fun. We're going to have fun this year, though. I'm super excited again. And uh, like I said, like we, bro, we got all the talent in the world, especially for our team. So that's going to be, we're going to have a fun ride. 100%, dude. I sure hope so. Drew, what do you got? Heck yeah. So, um, you know, we've already talked about your football talents and the type of player you are on the field, but I want to talk about something off the field, um, your music career. So, uh, just, yes, sir. Uh, what inspires you with your music? Like, what makes you want to do that? Um, I've always enjoyed music since I was younger and everything. I pulled back from music because football started getting serious. And, man, I had to focus more on that. But then when I was on the Raiders and – I would get home at like two o'clock every evening. I'm like, man, I ain't got nothing else to do. So I started tapping back in the music world and everything. And it just it just started happening. I started making songs. Um, at first I started off making beats and then I was like, you know what? I want to know what my voice would sound like on the song. So I kept, I don't know, I just kind of have a couple of bottles of wine or whatever. <laughs> video, start creating stuff. And I'm like, man, this is fun. So once I found my tone, where my voice fit, it was over. Heck yeah, that's crazy. Uh, like it's just cool to see, like you know, like what people can produce off the field. Because I feel like, you know, as fans, we never really get to see like what football players are really like. You know, like what are they into? We only know y'all is just a punter, quarterback, or whatever y'all are. I know. I, I agree, man. Because like I remember, I was a huge fan of Mike Vick, and like. Watching them as a kid and everything, you just think that they go out on the field, play football, and then go back in the locker room and plug into their locker, and then they come out the locker until like that next Sunday and play again. Like, so yeah, I appreciate that. Heck yeah, Marquette. Going kind of back into the football realm of things. Um, mm-hmm. Earlier, you said how you started as a wide receiver. That's where you got your swag, arm sleeve, transfer over, all that. But how would you get into punting? We're like, because I know like there's. There's stories of stuff even in college too, where it's like pre-practice, like someone just drops a ball and punts it or snaps it or something, and a coach is like, "Hold on, like we could do something with that." Nah, is there any I'm kind of story bored. like that for you? I'm just bored, man. Like I go, <laughs> go run routes and stuff, and then when I got done running routes at this elementary school down the street, um, I pick up the cones, set them about 30, 40 yards apart, and just keep kicking until I got tired from being outside. Wow. And then you were like, dang, I'm pretty good at this. No, nah, everybody else had to tell me because I just thought it was normal. I was just hit. <laughs> and people would be like, dang, bombs. Like, you don't, you don't know, do you notice how high you're kicking that ball? And I'm like, I mean, it just looks normal. They're like, no, you can really do something with this. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, do we, uh, we talked about the swag and you're kind of known for it. You're known for your celebrations too. Uh, mm-hmm. where have you always done that? Like, where did you get the celebrations from and kind of where did that start? I've always done that. I've always, I just like being goofy as hell. Like I enjoy <laughs> doing that. I like, I like making people smile and, um, shoot. Anytime we play against another team, like, I don't know. <clears throat> this one, it was also when I was like super competitive. I'm still super competitive now, but like, uh, when I see another team make plays or something and they start doing some celebration, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna start doing that back at them. So. <laughs> I did some, I started doing the same celebration back at them. So, you got I've anything always, lined up for for this season in the UFL that we should look out for that you haven't know. released yet? I don't know yet. It's you'll see. You'll see next week. <laughs> All right. Okay. I mean, it's me punt. We all know. I don't know. Yeah. We, yeah. We got the gunslinger over here. So, <laughs> I don't know. shoot, dude. Well, uh, we kind of you know talked about football as much as we could, and then obviously with music. Whenever your football career does end, whether it's, you know, five years down the road, 10 years down the road, you know, punters can play for a while. What are you, what do you want to do with your life after? What does Marquette King, you know, have lined up? You know, what do you want to do as you kind of retire from the game of football? Man, I, I mean, I'm really enjoying the music world. Uh, I also want to get into real estate a little bit more. Yep. Um, what else? I love wine, red wine. So I might want to look into doing something along that. Uh but yeah, I'm a I'm a simple guy, dog. So, I mean, wine, music, 
a little bit of real estate. I'm when uh, when you were playing for Oakland, did you ever make it to Napa Valley? Hell yeah, that's where we had camp at. Yep. All right, because yeah, I'm, I'm from had... Sacramento, so. Okay. Okay. No, Sacramento's cool too, but Napa. Yeah. Some you really said... nice, really nice vineyards out there. Yeah, Love you said you like wine. I thought you had to go there for sure. So. Yes, sir. Boys, funny story. The first time I met Marquette, I uh, so I knew what he looked like just from like growing up watching him. But we're having an offensive walkthrough first night before camp. We like our first practice is the next morning outside in the hotel, and Marquette comes just like chained out and iced out in chains, has red wine in his hand, and I'm like, dude, who's what is this receiver doing? Is he like the best receiver in the league or something? <laughs> And they're like, that's Marquette. And I was like, oh, shit, that is Marquette King. <laughs> hey, so, we, was chilling. we was chilling. Me and Taylor was vibing, man. You know the kickers and punters be vibing, so. <laughs> oh, absolutely, dude. Well, hey, Drew, Jack, y'all got anything else for him before we let him go? I'm good. I Our appreciate good. you talking to us, man. It, yeah, it was, it was cool. Yeah, man, I appreciate the convo, man. It was fun. For sure. Hey, I'll talk to you tomorrow, Marquette. Appreciate you joining, brother. All right, brother. Appreciate y'all. See you. All right, peace. Boys, that was a fun one. That uh, that was brought to you by Southern Ease. Let's uh, give them a shout out. What are you waiting for? Experience the many wellness benefits of Southern Ease's tasty hemp edibles by going to southernease.com. They're also going to send Marquette some of those, um, so I'll have to get his opinion on them get him here a soon. A review video, maybe. Oh, yeah. yeah, I should. I should. Yeah. But, boys, what would you think of the interview? I thought that was sweet. Um that's kind of another one where you you hang up and you're like, dang, like I used I used to watch him on TV, like with Stanford Steve, it was like, whoa. Um, and obviously we've met him before, but that was another one where it's like you hang up and you're like, that was pretty cool. Glad we did that. Yeah, he's a real just like authentic dude. Like, you know, he's super honest. Like he's going to say like what he likes. Like he's just. <laughs> he's going to say what he likes. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> He, he he just is he what he genuine. is. Yeah, he genuine. genuine. That, that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, he is. He's a super cool dude. And like, I mean, obviously you guys know, and we kind of tweeted it. But Ben Kurt, Kurt Ben Kurt was supposed to join today, um, and he's in Hawaii, so he's going to join next week. But obviously, we shoot this morning, so like, like who do I get? I already had a plan to get him. I already talked to him about it before, and I was like, dude, can you shoot tonight? Like, let's get you on. He was like, yeah, man, whatever I need to do to help you out. So great guy. Um, appreciate him doing that. And hey. Also, I want to give a shout out to Worth Chiropractic. Go to one eight hundred or call one eight hundred Back Doc today. Uh, two convenient locations on Arlington Boulevard. Anything from a bad back, which hey, if you're an ex athlete, you got a bad back. I'm one of them. They have helped me keep me on the field, and I've said it multiple times. As soon as I get back to Greenville, I'm going over to Worth Chiropractic, getting my back popped, getting it all fi fixed and realigned. So one eight hundred Back Doc. Two convenient locations on Arlington Boulevard. Shout out to those guys. Um, for helping us out. Speaking of back popping, I'm oh, just bringing boy. us right into the next one. It's March, so the brackets are popping here, and I'm really curious. You know, we 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 didn't tell our picks at all, um, but we were talking about let's let's find some upsets, let's find some true sleepers in the brackets now that the field has been released. Um, I'm really curious to hear what you two guys have for some sleepers in the brackets that our listeners could uh, look for in March Madness. You go one at a time here. We got two, so one at a time. Hey, let's do it like, uh, what is it, Chris Berman style when he talks about, um, it's like fast and he talks about like the frozen tundra and all that. What is it, Jack? You know what I'm talking Whoop! about? Sorry Whoop! if that was yeah. bad, but yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so you got to go quick, Drew. Act like you're motivating people about this team, like they should go and bet for them. Um, so Drew, you go Chris first. Berman. Hype them up. Give yeah. give reasons why. Right. You first. Ah. All right. I already talked about them before. Grand Canyon State University. It's not team. Grand Canyon State. It's just Grand. Oh Canyon. yeah, Grand Canyon. <laughs> Don't know why I said that. Besides the point. That's how you Grand know Grand Canyon seat. University. They're an old team. They're ready for the tournament. They're, they're a 12 seed going against a, a five seed. It's going to be a tough game, but they're going to fight it out and they're going to advance to the round of 32. All right, Jack. I got the New Mexico Lobos. I feel like the Mountain West was very disrespected in the seedings in this bracket. Um, you know, New Mexico has been a tough team to play all year. We've seen it first on this podcast. Our friend Caden doubted them, and guess what? He proved them wrong. So I'm going with the New Mexico Lobos in the 11 seed. Speaking of Caden, he'll be on next week. He's on a work trip. But, hey, I got 
fine. I don't know their actual uh, mascot, but they're 28 and 6 versus the Duke Blue Devils, Ooh. the old rival. People are going to call me crazy. Vermont's leading score. Guess how much he averages, boys. Just guess. Give me a guess. 23. Ooh. Jack? Uh, I'm going higher. 26. 12.5. <laughs> the boy, <laughs> but the boys are 28 and 6. Everyone scores on their team. If you guess Vermont, guess what? Not a lot of brothers. Bunch of little white chocolate out there around pass and dish and layups, floaters. Vermont's going to beat Duke in the first round. Drew, who's your second team? All right, second team. You could argue if it's an upset or not, but I got Drake. Uh, they're a 10 seed going against Washington State, 7 seed. Uh, Drake, I believe a great formula for upset tournament teams are a star guard and a good big man, and Drake has both of them. Uh, their star guard averages about 23, a lot more than 12, and um, their big man <laughs> gets about seven boards a game, and he's – about seven feet tall, so that helps a lot in, in in the tournament. Jack? I'm going with the Oregon Ducks in the 11 seed. They're playing South Carolina. Oregon was pretty injured. Uh, they, they couldn't stay healthy during the year, um, and they still managed to survive and advance. But uh, now they're returning their health. They're getting back into swing, and I think they're poised to make a big run starting with an upset versus South Carolina. Well, Jack took my New Mexico Lobos bet, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to give you New York Knicks NBA champions. The boys are hot right now. <laughs> Put in the futures bet now. We're going to get into betting in just a second. The New York Knicks are hot. Just beat the Warriors. Jalen Brunson looks like an MVP candidate. I wish I had a futures on him. Whoops. I do. Go New York Knicks, Whoop. boys. Whoop. Hold on. You got a future on Jalen Brunson getting MVP? And New York Knicks winning it all, boys. Yeah, you just threw your money away. No, I didn't because guess what? First week. Maybe I didn't. Maybe someone in my family did. But the boys are up off of my decisions. $1,000 off week one. I'm on track to make $52,000. <laughs> Let's First go. First week of gambling, the boys are hot. Yeah, no, we're we're hot all around here. Um, I'm heating up here. Um, you know, I've, I've been sending them with you, Holt. I think I'm four for four on my last four bets. I'm up roughly four to $500 right now. Um, since starting so right now if we keep this up it's highway robbery for us baby Whoop, <laughs> whoop, <laughs> dude seriously though we're gonna start posting our best a little bit more on twitter um we're not even gonna say our best tonight because we're gonna post them on twitter the day of uh and when we feel good about it because i'm telling you boys i got a good feeling on nba jack we talked about it last week did you end up taking out of the parlay i i totally forgot to even ask you i've been so busy uh so tell us about that story and what you decided to do yeah so i had a so i i signed up with FanDuel when it became legal here in north carolina um and with that obviously you got a set of bonus bets so i think we got two 100 hundred dollar bonus bets and a 250 and fifty bonus bet i uh, was feeling kind of risky one day so i put a hundred dollar bonus bet on a four leg parlay um i think it consisted of wichita state USC, um, who was the third one? Can't forget the third one. But then it came down to Kansas versus Cincinnati, and I had Kansas. Um, hit the first three. It was like 100 to win 800. And I could have hedged out um, and cashed out that bet. at I think it, it dropped down to like 130, really. But I was like, you know what? Let's ride. Like Rock Chalk Jayhawk in March. Um, granted, I was, I was feeling it a little bit. It wasn't March fully yet because it's a conference tournament. So retrospectively, I probably should have cashed out at 130. But anyways, I let it ride. But then I got home and I'm like, hold on. I took my $250 bonus bet and I put it on Cincinnati. So either way, I was coming out making pretty good money. Um, Cincinnati ended up winning. I ended up taking home, I think it was roughly 175, maybe 180. Um, so yeah, I did burn through a, a bonus bet there, but I took home 180 cold hard cash and that helped contribute to my my good margin right now the boys that, are still up big that time right now no it did it did the boys are still up big time i tell you um hopefully we keep it up boys like i said we're on track to make a lot of money this year yeah between between you Caden, and i we've we've been pretty far what are we uh are we feeling for the are we we got any locks for the tournament yet? I really haven't looked too much. Uh we we got any locks other than just our upset alerts. That was just kind of upset alerts. We're not betting on these teams, yeah, by the way. Yeah, that was just upset alert. Um 
locks. I don't. I mean, I'm pretty confident in. Uh, I like. I think North Carolina has a pretty easy kind of bra- side of the bracket right there. Outside of Arizona, Drew. Drew's big on Arizona. We're we're roommates. If you guys didn't know, so we made a little paper bracket. Um, Appreciate the invite, boys. Well, you can't have a paper bracket in Texas and have it in our <laughs> living room, so <laughs> you didn't make the cut. Sorry. But anyways, he picked Arizona to win, and it was the craziest thing ever. And I don't know if he wants to talk about that, but we can. But it's absurd. And he, part of his reasoning, I don't even know if it's part of his reasoning, a supporting article is that the Final Four is in Arizona. So if they make it there, they're going to have home court advantage. But they're not going to get anywhere close to that. Drew, I saw close. some. The Drew, Nevada I saw something won. today that's, that said since like 1987, a uh, national champion hasn't been near the West Coast like at all. I've also seen that before. Well, there's a first for everything, and it looks like it's going to be in 2024. <laughs> well, we shall see. We need to post our bracket. We need to create a Holt Naylor Show bracket for people to join, dude. What yeah. a great idea no. I just came up with. We could put it on the walls here since they're still empty. <laughs> yeah. Shame. Shame. We're Shame. Working on it. We're working on it. We're, we're, we're grinding. Or at least um, we're trying to. Speaking dude, of wait, trying to – oh, you go ahead. Oh, I had a good idea. Is, go yours, is yours a good idea? No, no, you go, you go, you go. All right, so Jack, you were the one t- telling me that DraftKings had a two hundred fifty dollars thing promo for North Carolinians, but it's twenty five dollars bet and it's split into ten, right? Yeah, I actually did something interesting with that. Well, dude, I got an interesting idea too. So we should, do, first of all, we should tweet out that code. We can get the boys some uh, some free plays with with uh, our fans getting free plays too. But yeah, what are your thoughts on putting a twenty five dollar bet on every sixteen? 15 and then two 14s. So I, I actually did something of that nature. I didn't go that low in seeds, um, but I took six of the 10, $25 promos from that one because I'm kind of a simple man. I want to stay with FanDuel, um, but I, I did draft Kings to help out with Caden. And so I had those 10, $25 bets. I took six of them. And I put them on on some favorites that I like, you know. I put them on the UConn, the UNC um, teams like that. And because I saw a stat saying that in like thirteen out of the last fourteen Final Fours have had a one seed, um, so I kind of did that math and, and took the one seeds from there. But similar to you, I just went a safer route. I feel like, but from a profit perspective, that's a way better move, obviously. <laughs> Boys, I really didn't think about this, but this is the last episode before the tournament starts. Do we have any national champion uh, predictions? Well, I already talked about mine. Um, I do think Arizona is a good team. They obviously played a bad game in their conference tournament, but outside of that, they've been strong. And uh, I just feel like they're due. You know, there's really no way to determine, you know, who's going to win. It is. It's out of 64 people. So, So Drew, you got got Arizona. You locking that in? Yeah. Or tweet it. I'll All tweet right, it, Jack, or put on his show. I can't put two, can I? No, you got to lock in one. Who's the national champion in 2024? I'm saying out of the left side of the bracket in the final four, it's going to come down to UConn versus UNC. I think those two one seeds are both going to make it, but I don't have a one seed making on the other side. Don't worry. But I'm going to go with the Tar Heels, man. No Nevada. They look. They just lost a. Uh... NC State. <laughs> that's not everything about conference tournaments, man. Like that stuff happens. No, that is true. Fun fact: Carolina has never won a national championship while winning the conference championship. So I've got they're uh, off to a good start. I've got Kansas upset in Purdue. I don't think Purdue's good, neither, dude. Yeah, you shut down a what is it, ZD or whatever his name is, Edie. Zach Edie. Zach Edie. Yeah. Uh, he's beat. All right, so you got Carolina. I'm gonna lock mine in. UConn, led yeah. by Tristan Newton, former Pirate. Um, I think they're going to go back-to-back. First time since 07, 08 with Florida. So that's my lock. We'll, we'll get Cadence and tweet it out, boys. Um, March, spring, best time of the year, in my opinion, other than football season, boys. We got anything else? Yeah. Uh, speaking of spring, you know, baseball season's quickly approaching us. The Dodgers and Padres are kicking it off this weekend overseas. Um, we're the people show. We've always said that. I want you guys to respond. I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of Braves, um, maybe some up north teams in there. Go Cubs, baby. I, li- I like to talk about the Giants. Uh, big week for us. Blake Snell, yep, yeah, we're contenders now. Don't talk about it. Anyways, but respond back to us. Let us know. DM us. Whatever you want to hear on, on baseball teams, um, I'll do my best to research it and talk about it every week and kind of this allow this to be your source of news for your team. So, you know, reach out. Let us know what you're looking for for baseball or, or any sports, you know, um, and, and we'll make that happen for you. 
we have to get Ariel back on and talk about some uh, some strikeout parlays and stuff like that because uh, that's a different type of betting that we're going to have to do research on. I'm Like I said, I'm really good at NBA. I don't know much about MLB, though. Yeah, we'll work on it. We'll Got figure it out. Hey, before we ended, I want to give Wayne Hardy a shout-out, 1-800-INJURED. Car accident or anything in between, you need a lawyer, call 1-800-INJURED. They will help you out, get you a rental car if you are in a car accident. We'll treat you like family. That's the Wayne Hardy way. Um, go check them out. One eight hundred injured. Shout out to those guys for supporting the show, boys. We got anything else? I think we're good. Nope, I'm good. Hey, miss y'all, man. The whole Naylor Show brought to you by Southern Ease, episode eleven. Thanks to all the sponsors. Thanks to all the fans. Hey, next week, Kurt Ben Kurt. Hopefully, it doesn't fall through. Hopefully, hey boys, say a prayer. Fans, say a prayer. We have some, something on the walls before next episode. I'll you never know. We'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll work on it. Um, but hey, appreciate y'all boys. Miss you. We'll uh, we'll talk soon. Episode eleven, Holt Naylor's show for sure.